Hello everybody and welcome to another master class here filmed in Sandpoint, Idaho. Woohoo! Which um, in this one we're going to be working with Michelle and her blue and gold macaw sister who is rescued from a hoarding situation and her goals are to be able to work with this bird without hormonal responses. One of the struggles that we're seeing here with Michelle is that since her bird isn't on the proper diet or the proper sleep, the whole motivation is thrown off completely. Yes, you could argue that we're in a new space, but sometimes being in a new space makes it work in the bird's favor or in the human's favor, I should really specify. But since the bird has been on what I would consider to be a little bit more of a junk diet, although unintentional, that diet with kind of the heavier fillers, there's all these things in the diet that are making it so the value of the treat isn't there. And I think specifically too, Michelle has struggled to figure out what the best treat is. So once we were able to figure out that, hey, it's banana chips, not pine nuts, we're able to make a little more progress and to help her out. Well, let's try to wrap up a little bit with sister here. We don't have the same motivation because of diet and sleep, but we can still make progress. And that's why this is beneficial, as you can see some of the other birds. Are you paying attention? I think I'm still finishing that treat. I know, delicious. did you like the bananas? I have to quit talking like a small child to you. I do it too, it's bad. Okay, nice. so you saw how that was a little more aggressive? Yeah. So, so a couple things down. you could do is Back bring up. it slightly higher. Okay. It's a little harder for them to be super aggressive when they have to like reach up. What about low? The same thing? Um, or are they more likely to... Run? You're better run off going a little higher. Okay. So have Jamie come close, and I want you to watch her body language really closely. Okay, what do you oh, see of that? Yeah. Heightened. You're, heightened. You're in her space. But heightened in a bad way, where with you it could have been a good way. Yes, I think heightened in a bad way. That looks funny. I would agree. <laughs> now I want you to see with me. <laughs> you want to do it? She's listening. Oh, but she usually will go to men. So what did you see with that? I think if you reach for her, she would still be negative. I saw no eye pinning, mm -hmm. or I saw eye pinning with the two of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what does that mean? The fu feathers went away for you. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. What? You don't want to pay attention to what I'm doing? Okay, so pause. Yeah. Good. Good. Job. You so, said it, and yeah. So then, what I might do in that scenario? Plus, turn around. I yeah. might be giving reinforcement because I'm close and she mm -hmm. likes guys. But if I had that same reaction, it's just me. I'm like, why aren't you targeting? I would flash her treats and remember this? And then it's like, oh yeah, back in training. I'm mean, I don't do that. I'm just like, you're not getting it. <laughs> right? It's because your feelings oh, are hurt. what's that guy doing over there? You want to go over this way? <laughs> what's this? So, this is, no, I don't want to pull on that. You want to do this? I'm out of your range a little bit. You have to turn to reach me. A little closer, help her out. Yeah. Mm, good girl. Nice job. Good. Oh, she could snap that off. So one of the things that I noticed there is the repetition beforehand, you didn't have her attention. When you switch sides, she turned to follow you, mm -hmm. you had her attention, you read it properly, and you went in and you gave okay. the cue to touch the six. This time come all the way around, so she okay. so she chooses to turn around. Have to get another treat. Oh, she's already doing it. She heard you. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, you get best bird ever. Nice job. Nice, and that was gentle, and you're not accidentally bridging. What's going on? And you only have to show the treat if you like lost her attention. Yeah, right there, and then That's in slightly. Oh, she's good. still nibbling, so. She's yeah, busy. Meter, 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 meter. Nice. So in the beginning stages of target training, we're kind of finding this happy medium where it's like that ET moment where you're uh -huh. touching. Yeah. Eventually, it's going to be no. I need you to come here. Yeah. Touch, right? I need you to come here and then come yeah. back. But right yeah, now, we're definitely trying to help me. So. Well, yeah, and when I go get her out of the cage, I get her out of the cage. Like, she doesn't always come to me to come off. So I need to work on that. Yeah, so so meet her like, uh, like, don't move your feet. I want you to grab this. It is way You can't uh, quite. So you yeah. have to take one step towards me okay. to get this. Yeah, your neck is only so long. Right. So I want you to get to that point where it's like one little step. Okay. And then the next time, 
it's two steps to get to this. Mm -hmm. And so you can gradually increase that in small approximations. Yeah, I don't know if this bird would ever hop or try to fly. And Probably I don't, it doesn't not. matter to me because she can do some damage fast if she yeah. does something I'm not paying attention. But you're also encouraging mobility mm -hmm. and you're encouraging kind of what we said for them where the bird is learning that it has to come to you to get that treat because that or dinner because that's a huge mm -hmm. reinforcement. You can do the same thing if every interaction is a training session, get a little bit closer to what you eventually would want. Let's see if how you work through it with the distraction right here. Okay. She wants to look at you. <laughs> what about the bird? She's she doesn't up with you. <laughs> Goodness, well, Oops, I, I didn't have my hand on no, the thing. Right. Don't, Don't click, click, click now. It's too late. So you said good girl. Yeah. You you said, like, before. Didn't work. Oh, I mean like like good girl, you're doing it right. You were you bridged before she clicked or before she touched, and then you just didn't click. So keep in mind that it was I only mentioned it because was it was <laughs> an, a habit we're trying to adjust. Mm -hmm. But make sure that when you click in your mind, you are taking a picture of the exact moment you want to see again. Okay. So if she did a behavior and you had the clicker upside down. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't have it down far enough. Did you want to see that behavior? No, I didn't even see what she did. See, you're making my point. <laughs> <laughs> he was about to tell you it. that clicking late is something you never want to do. And I just did it. And then you did it. I did it. <laughs> She's never, okay, slap me. I'll do 10 push-ups. Sorry. <laughs> it's not that easy. Well, I've never had, a, I've never clicker right. trained a bird. Yeah. I mean, with horses, we taught them to empty so we could ultrasound them, empty their poop. Oh, wow. Which is crazy, but I had to do 25 a day, and I teach them to back up, lift their tail, poop in the bucket, and then I could ultrasound them quick. That's nuts. Ooh. That is nuts. With a carrot. Piece of carrot. <laughs> you ultrasound them with a carrot? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they get the carrot as a reward. He's messing with you. It's <laughs> <laughs> painful. All right, let's do like two more reps and we'll wrap up okay, here. So I've had my hand in the right place on this thing. Set up for success. All right. Okay. All right, you're going to lift up this way? Oh, shit, I'm in your space. It looks like you don't like that. Try this. So flash her the treat. Mm -hmm. Do you want to earn that? Okay, yeah. now show her the stick. Bring it a little closer right there. Pause there. Bring it in meter. Excellent. Good girl. Good job. <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> I think it's me. <laughs> the bird's like, eh. So you're cueing right now. Oh. There you go. Mm -hmm. It's hard to remember. It's hard, and then I'm like, is her 20-year-old brain just as fresh to learn as a baby, yeah. you know? I think so. I think they're more receptive to it, especially if there's neglect. They're like, oh my gosh, this is cool, versus them being like, used to that their whole life. Yeah. Which is normal. I think that you're giving an opportunity that they're craving. I just feel like whatever. Awesome. See, so are getting movement. Yep. And you're queuing still. There you go. You dropped it off just like Good girl. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of lessons. The reason I'm yeah. calling out every little you micro moment good. is those are really important. Yeah. It is, it, it's critical that you're speaking really clearly. Okay, final one right here. So this time I want you to focus on the fundamentals, speaking clearly okay. as far as the visuals go, and getting movement like you did on the last one was really good. So getting her to move with the intention to get the, the stick. Ready? So you bridged already. Mm -hmm. That was excellent how soft you had her do it. So if I didn't take this down quick enough. You're okay on that? Yeah. Okay. It's not like rush it out of the shot. It's just lowering it while you get the treat. It's usually for me, it's like target and treat. That was great. So now I've also had people tell me that I shouldn't pet her on the head because of the sexual behavior stuff. The head's it's like, where can I pet her? The head's okay, okay, but do you think she liked that? That time she didn't. Right. Sometimes she so that was punishment up. right mm -hmm. after doing something you wanted her to do. Okay. So just kind of I wanted to pet her, but she exactly. didn't necessarily want it. Okay. Yeah. Screw Sometimes that. she'll lift a wing, and so then I'm like, oh, she wants to be That's sexual. The wing. Yeah. Oh, she'll. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, oh yeah, she'll. she'll she what? grabs her tail feathers with her feet and pulls on them and turns. Yeah. And she does all kinds of stuff that I know. Is I know what it is. Yeah. But I can't help you with that. Okay. Well, she looks beautiful, but I would have never guessed she came from a hoarding situation. Yeah. She didn't look too bad when I got her. She didn't have all the rest. Are you petting her under her wing? Yeah. After we just told you that it's sexual. Oh. Yeah. But, but what else can I pet her? 
Oh, how else can I put me under my wing? That's so inappropriate. I mean, seriously, folks. Oh, man, I'm in so much trouble. They're going to black mark me. <laughs> we need to title this one like Fifty Shades of Dander. <laughs> oh, that's great. All the things not to do. <laughs> That would be the title of every video. This is just because the energy. So that was a good read. Okay. So, so if you look but I at, want to pick her up. See so my ABCs, right? Yeah. You just you stopped here, right? You avoided the unwanted bite. You respected her body language of I'm going to tear you apart. So I should back up. So well, you allowed her to acknowledge that that setup was not for success. So how can you do it now where she is set up for success? Slower. Wait. Could there be something in it for her? Reward for being picked up? Yep. Yeah. So Never previously you have been a reward, right? Yeah. Which you still are most of the time. But in that environment, we had just heightened her because we're all joking, laughing. And so she was too heightened, which again, mm -hmm. excited, mm -hmm. right? But heightened ah. in a bad way. So as you feel now, the energy in the room is calm. Mm -hmm. And so now you might time. have success. Mm -hmm. And if you're not sure, you could show retreat and ask for a step up. You can just try to try to change things because this animal could kill you. How would you do it differently? She wants this though, but I want her to want me and I want you to want the treat. Do I show it to her and then put my hand out? And then she might bite my hand. Okay, so let's try something else. What if you jump over to this side? Okay. Slowly turns. Mm -hmm. She's got me. With or without a treat, whatever you think. I just, I'm not used to reaching down. It's usually up and then she steps. Or I'll hold my hand sometimes and if she comes over, then I'll pick her, then I'll lift her up. So how would you normally work through this at all? I would wait. I didn't necessarily pull it away or just see. Sometimes she just wants to put her tongue on me. This bird will stick her tongue in her mouth. She'll come around and get her beak on your lips. I mean, I know people feed their birds that way, but I don't do any of that stuff. feed their birds that way? You feed them food out of their mouth. It's not hygienic. <laughs> okay. You want to step up? That's so wrong. You know who else feeds the bird out of their mouth? You. Their mate. Well, their mom. Yeah. Oh, yeah, their mom. You step up. Good girl. Oh, nice yeah. job. Nice job. Nice job. Good job. Good job. Good job. One of the things that I found interesting with Michelle, and I think kind of a learning checkpoint where she was having a hard time not doing it, was in the medical field, just based on the fact that she's a vet, she has been conditioned not to react or back off of an animal when met with aggression or discomfort from an animal. They just kind of hold true and so push had through. To push through, yeah. Yeah, and she was kind of like, I got lots of scars and all sorts of things to show it, like aggressive dogs or animals just not wanting to be, I don't know. Withheld and euthanized? Nah, not euthanized, <laughs> but <laughs> medical procedures that are like undoubtedly scary. And so her natural response was just to like wait there and kind of take it or wait yeah. for the animal to just stop trying. and. And that was something, it was an interesting concept for us to have to really work with because I think normally people are intimidated by animals and usually take a step back and kind of have these big reactions. She was the opposite. She was not going to step down. And so really telling her how to read the body language so that she could then respect it and interpret it, I think was really important. Yeah. And I think with parrots, especially when you challenge your, you know, your spot of authority so to speak or their spot of authority there becomes this fight that you don't win and so we as trainers have to really look at the body language and say hey it's okay that you don't want to do this let me pause and step back and say why not what can i do differently and so that was a big lesson to try to get through uh in in a small amount of time but i think that we're able to communicate some of that so she's able to better spot it herself and one of the things i liked that you were trying to really drill through her head the entire two hour class was not putting a label 
on each and every body language cue that she found. So she kept using words like interested, excited, curious, and they were all kind of like happier labels in my mind. I don't, yeah. I'm not scared about something that's curious. I'm not scared about something that's excited um, or interested. It's, it sounds- <laughs> Unless it's a cockatoo. Yeah, unless it's a cockatoo. Um, <laughs> good point. <laughs> Well said. <laughs> but with this case, you know, excited sounded like a great thing. And so the challenge really for her was to, every time I'd hear it, I'm like, okay, what do you really see? Okay, heightened. Yes, heightened can be excited. It can also be really, really, really mad. Yeah, and I think you were just trying to challenge her to describe the body language cues and the behaviors that she was seeing versus what she's interpreting that to mean. Yeah. So as a trainer, if you're doing everything because you're like, oh, he likes this. Well, maybe not. A perfect example too is she went to pet him on the head or pet her on the head. I was like, did she like that? She's like, not right there. And I'm like, so you just punished her for doing something she wanted. And I think that was one of those moments too, where she was like, oh, okay. So the way I usually relate to people is when you speak to yourself in absolutes, he loves this. She, she hates this. That bird's excited. You, you lose the opportunity to see both sides of the coin. And so by labeling it as this bird is heightened, now you can look at that objectively and say, hmm, is it heightened good because there's a male in the room? Or is it heightened bad because there's a camera in her face? Or is it heightened because I'm going to get nailed? Or because she's really excited to leave the perch? You start to look at it from those different angles and that's where you have those breakthroughs on your own.